This brings us to a serious point in question. In regards to situations like that of Rifka Berry's, what is more valuable, the freedom of religion as expressed in the First Amendment or the law of the land? The First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Each situation is different. Although we advocate freedom of religion, it is important that the lives of others remain safe and secure. So when religion starts interfering with someone's personal safety or the safeties of others around them, it should not be allowed to be exercised and the government should step in. We tolerate other religions and in this country we have the freedom to practice the religion we want. But if a person's religious practices endanger the lives of others, it is important that the government take the proper action to ensure the safety of our people. Toleration does not mean 100% acceptance, especially in cases such as Rifka Berry's. This young girl claimed that her life was in danger. She feared for her safety because her parents were extremely upset that she had converted to Christianity. In the Catholic religion, for example, any confession told to a priest is supposed to be held secret. When you confess to a priest, that confession is between you, the priest, and God only. So if you are a devout Catholic and you confess to a priest something, such as murdering someone, should the priest be held responsible if they decide not to report this? Rifka's pastor does not believe that he should have been required to report the runaway because he felt her life was in danger. When Rifka confessed certain things, like physical and sexual abuse from her father to the pastor, he did not report these claims directly to the police. Some of Rifka's friends claim that she would sometimes go to school with bruises on her body, but images or solid proof of this have never been released. She confided to her pastor that her father had beaten her and sexually abused her in the past, and she ran away because she was afraid that if she had stayed for even just another week, she would have been murdered. On the other hand, it is up to the government to uphold the law regardless of the situation, since harboring a runaway child without reporting it to the police or the parents of the runaway is illegal, many would agree that the pastor should be in trouble for his actions. By not sending Rifka back to Ohio or letting anyone know where she was, he was indeed breaking the law. But from a religious and moral standpoint, he felt that Rifka's life was in danger and he was only doing what he thought was right.